Another CEO Wisdom Podcast with Khaled M. Ismail. He is the CEO at Tough Love Advisor. Got to spoke with Khaled a bit before. Really cool guy. I love his innovation and how he looks at the world. So Khaled, can you introduce yourself? Tell us a bit more about yourself and what you're up to nowadays. Absolutely. And uh, thanks for having me. I really appreciate this. Uh, any opportunity to share our thoughts, learnings, plans is always welcome. Khaled Ismail is the name, as you suggested uh, earlier. And uh, yes, um, you know, I'm the CEO of a new age kind of consulting firm called uh, Tough Love Advisors. And Tough Love Advisors is what it suggests in the name. We give businesses, not people, sometimes people, uh, tough love to improve and grow as an organization. But this comes at the back end of introducing myself. I'm a 33-year corporate veteran. I have uh, not done consulting before. And that was really the differentiator that we bring myself and my partners that come in. We bring in real-life experience to a conversation with our clients. So that's really who I am in really short uh, snippet. What did you learn from Tetra Pak and Coca-Cola? You spent 25 years there, something like that. So what were your insights while working there? Well, uh, you know, I'm a marketeer at heart. I grew in the marketing world in advertising, joined Coca-Cola and Tetra Pak. Funnily enough, both brands were uh, accounts for me on the advertising side. So I had managed them when I was uh, on the advertising side. But when I went to, to Coke, learnings, it's uh, at the time and sure is now, it's a school. Uh, you learn the whole spectrum of what marketing is, whether it's to do with the, the packaging of the product, the labeling, the branding, the activation, the partnership, production, events. And as a brand manager, and I became a region brand uh, manager at the time, uh, it, it basically meant I went to school into marketing, but in real life with an amazing brand. Um, and I spent, you know, a good five to seven years there, different parts of the world. Then I joined for the past 20 years before I left. I was with um, Tetra Pak, which is a famous packaging company uh, based out of Sweden and, and Switzerland. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was uh, looking after brand and communications and uh, reputation and sustainability and everything that comes under that umbrella uh, for Europe, Central Asia, Middle East and Africa before I left uh, very recently, about a year and a half ago. And that's when the idea of Tough Love was uh, born. What do you say to people that call Coca-Cola sugar water company? You know, we cannot deny what it is. The product is what the product is, but we have to give it to the, first of all, the benefits of the product, meaning, you know, you're refreshing. Uh, it gives you what you're looking for in moderation. It's actually fantastic. Of course, drink a lot of anything. You will be ill, sick, if not, you know, take it any further than that. Um, but uh, it's a brilliant marketing idea to take something that is already well liked and make it synonymous with everyday life and the enjoyment moments uh, um, that, that Coca-Cola brings. So my comment says it's a brand that uh, has changed the world from a branding perspective. Yeah, I still need to get my rum and coke fix. Um, it's been <laughs> like three years. So yeah, I have this itch I need to scratch. What tickles you? Yeah, this is what tickles me. Is a book I finished obviously uh, a while back. What tickles me is a lot of things that I learn from. So the concept of what tickles me is two things. One, things that make me irritated, but I put it in a positive, constructive way and I look at it and I look at the positive angle of it, but it has already irritated, irritated me, which is why I bring it up. Or it's an aha moment. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, so today, really, what tickles me is the consulting industry that I'm in. That is what's tickling right, right now, because the more I know about it, the more fascinating it becomes to me. And I'm happy to delve into that topic, but it's, it's a fascinating world. It sure is.
Right. Tell us like the top three, because uh, if I read on LinkedIn, it says it's not your traditional self-help book. Um, it is educational, entertaining, and informative. So what um, could you tell the listeners here, CEOs of uh, businesses and startups about like the, the insights in that book? Well, the book I think you're referring to now is the Made with Tough Love, which is the other book that we've uh, just finished uh, doing with my partners. Um, so uh, the Made with Tough Love is actually a, um, a very insightful book, uh, which brings together stories. It's real life stories of failures and success from the real world, from people that have been there for 30 plus years in the corporate world. Um, and the idea is to share it in a raw format. This is what I've done. This is what I like. This is what I don't like. This is what I've learned. Um, and this is what you can learn from me. And that was the, really the foundation behind putting together a book. The book really is a marketing tool, if I'm being honest, uh, because the more you read about it, the more you say, okay, I have, I'm dealing with practitioners, people who have been there, and they can certainly help me from a practical point of view rather than the theoretical point of view, which is what we've been used to uh, with a lot of the consulting that I've received over the years. Right. And let's say Tough Love, you decided to start this firm with what intentions uh, specifically? And tell us about the name. Tough Love um, has a good rap, a bad rap sometimes. Tell us why Tough Love. Tough Love comes from uh, the, a story, basically, that I uh, learned when, and it's in the book, actually, a story that uh, I received some feedback from a manager of mine when I was younger in the, in the corporate world. And that manager actually cared about my well-being and my growth. But he was very harsh on me. And I had to realize that this is actually for my own good. In fact, he called it, allow me to give you some Tough Love. And that's when the concept in the real world, not mama's world, because moms usually, and you know, your father and your uncle, you know, can give you some tough love in a family context. From a business context, it also applies. And therefore, I picked that up and I said, what if we do that for business? Come in and tell them how it is. Not what you want to hear, but rather what you need to hear in, in a very uh, structured manner. Uh, so that's really where the concept came from. And we said, why don't we bring in, in fact, all the partners that come on in Tough Love are practitioners. None of them have been in the consulting world, the traditional consulting world. And we would go out to companies and now we have about 25 different engagements uh, with different clients that we have come across as more genuine, more relevant um, and personalized rather than taking something off the shelf that I've done in many markets around the world. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's great benchmarking, but I really need you to fix my problem here. I don't need to go into the theory part of it. And that's where they hopefully have seen the difference that we bring to the table. So that's really what Tough Love is all about. Right. And how do you give feedback the right way? How, how can Tough Love be too much sometimes? Because I think some people use that umbrella to really spit venom on others <laughs> as as managers so what's the equilibrium here to have someone yeah, that, grow you know it's a good good uh, point charles i mean we are in business to uh, add value make money and be a sustainable relationship you cannot give someone uh, rude venom whatever it is you called it and expect this relationship to form because these sort of engagements are trust based if we can't trust each other, I won't be able to open my heart, my brains, my books, and make you actually help me. So uh, the concept is really coming in, and the at the heart of it is co-creation, which means we come in with our experience, and there's one thing that differentiates us. We believe in the concept of we will never know your business like you do. So we don't pretend that we know your business. Therefore, if we're going to fix something, we tend to co-create with you. We bring in our experience, your knowledge and experience in your business that you grew up in, developed, you know, and, you know, 
are facing the challenges that you are, and then we marry these two, two together. There are times where we pick up on things that you're doing or you have done and say, thank you for sharing this. And the idea is what you're doing is actually the cause of some of, or the root cause of some of the problems that you're facing. So in short, it's a process that we follow. And yes, we do give uh, 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 honest feedback. I'm sure a lot of people do that, but we put it in a structured way. Hence where the tough love, you know, spin on things come in with what we offer. Right. And what's the difference between seeing tough love or going to a typical McKinsey, let's say? Look, uh, I, you know, we respect all these companies that have become a multi-billion dollar companies out there. Um, and we are, like I said, we're small, we're boutique, we're personalized. In fact, one of the interesting uh, things that I, I remember reading, 80% of clients out there that we have been involved in, um, they are looking for personalized engagement rather than you bring in the top guns, you obviously impress uh, uh, the client with something. And then of course, a, a less experienced, more junior person comes in and, you know, comes and try to tell you what to do with your business. Um, personalized means we, the senior people who have been in uh, the businesses that we mentioned before, uh, are coming in to add the value directly with you and engage with your team. There are times where we have to have some number crunchers, which means we have advisors, but we are, you know, peer-to-peer -peer approach is what we follow. Right. Dubai, uh, EMEA, you worked in, in that region. Um, what percentage of your clients come from there um, VS Canada and or international? Tell me a bit more about your client base. Well, uh, we are based out of Dubai and Saudi Arabia. That's where home is for us. Uh, I would say about 80% of our clients are local and SMEs and family-owned companies. 20% are multinational companies based in this part of the world between Saudi and the UAE. Uh, I happen to be a Canadian, which means I travel there and I'm hoping one day that we will look at supporting companies in Canada, the SMEs are, again, because SMEs are the ones looking for something like this for a simple reason we are able to address their needs at a reasonable cost. We don't have major offices that, you know, obviously cost that would allow us to have to jack up our fees. So we're, you know, these guys are intimidated by, I guess, the bigger players who play on a much bigger scale. So that, I think I leave that to, to um, our clients to, to see the value we bring in. And then the idea is to continue working with them in the future as a repeat business. And that's where the success comes in. What do you see in EMEA um, startups or businesses that come and see you for consulting? What challenges do they face? Well, the majority of them, to be honest, is uh, especially the ones that we've been you know, interacting with, uh, whether it's uh, expanding their market. So go-to-market strategy. So they would have had a great start in one place and they want to know what would it take for them to expand their business. The other thing is what tends to happen with startups is it's brilliant young minds come together and they put a fantastic idea and they grow too fast, too big without processes or disciplined approach to doing business. We bring in a little bit of the discipline uh, we do not necessarily tap into their final product because that's where it differentiates them. It's the back end of it and the strategy for growth from where they are. But discipline, I would say, discipline in structuring the organization, the processes that's required, the organizational you know, uh, structure that allows them to grow in the various markets and the strategy to go to market for within the market that they're in or where they're expanding to. Right. What is next for Tough Love Advisors? Like, where do you want to grow the firm? Because you're you're an investor, you, you do all these things, but where do you want to take the company in the next couple of years? You know, the idea for Tough Love is comes from uh, a concept of bringing in people who are 
practitioners. So people that have done X number of years in the real world, working you know, in, in various sectors and industries. Um, and what I've come across is there's a lot of people after a certain number of years, and we're talking the majority of them, 25 to 30 years. That's a significant number of years of experience. They tend to get bored. They get to say, look, I think I've had enough of doing this grind, let's say. I've learned, I've grown, I've earned money. I don't need to put uh, a bread on the table anymore. I want to be able to give back. And of course, giving back has uh, different shapes and sizes. So the point for us is to identify these individuals in different markets. So we've started in, in the UAE and Saudi. I'm sure that one day we would look at Taflav Egypt, Taflav Turkey, Taflav Canada. Um, and it's not that difficult because there are a lot of people who have come out of that practitioner's mode. We now have the processes to help them deliver to, to the clients. We have the back end to support them, but they are a practitioner rather than a li lifelong consultant doing it in a certain way based on theory and insights. These people are not looking into insights. They're looking at their own experience and what they've been able to do and the failures that they have been through and, and the learnings that they've picked up along those years. Because I often study the big four. I want to turn my own agencies, well, some of them into consulting agencies. And sometimes I wonder how can I innovate here? Because these agencies, I mean, the model has been quite simple. They're kind of the Harvard of the consulting world. And they just drop a, a, a humongous invoice on, on these companies, you know, 500K, a million. I think we knew consulting firms can do something better, more innovative. What would what would that be like? For example, when you work on a client, how much do you charge them? Is it like a monthly recurring fee? Like how can we innovate to build uh, something better for us and for the clients? You know, we, we are trying to is, is structure our business in a sustainable way. So we work like any so-called consultant does. We call ourselves advisors because we bring in the real life experience. But we have daily rates and we work on projects. But one of the things I'm very, very conscious of, one, we want to make sure we come in to help your business grow and the fees are to be associated with that growth. So, you know, we can make sure that we're not just giving you a price tag and saying, look, take it or leave it because we want to be able to come in Find your budget that allows you to obviously uh, grow the business that you are trying to fix or want to expand. And we are, again, looking at it as a uh, um, either a retainer or an assignment, a project saying, here are the deliverables. And this is what we would uh, guarantee that at the end of it, you will see from us. Yeah. Uh, we do not necessarily look for a major half a million dollar project. You know, if it comes, we love it. We're looking at 50 to a hundred thousand dollar projects. That's the average right now. But these are projects that are coming, look at your business, give you a, a what we would call a um, uh, analysis of what we've seen, uh, and then be able to co-create with you and then give you a diagnostics report. And that report basically tells you what we have identified uh, as the challenges that we see. Right. Um, how do you get your new clients? Typically, is it like inbound or do you go outbound to get them? You know, uh, business development is is a tricky thing, uh, especially uh, in, in this uh, consulting world. Unless you have a big name on, on, on your door uh, and people come to you for the right reasons. And that is obviously what, what has happened historically, traditionally in the industry. We come in with our own contacts, people that trust us. Uh, and know us, that would be our first go-to interaction with the industry. Um, and, and of course, word of mouth would definitely become something that we can rely on in the future. We promote what we're doing to a certain degree. People know that we exist, but I'm, I'm very conscious that uh, the when the rubber hits the road is basically for us to be able to show uh, the value we bring to clients. And that's what the point is in in the sense that people would talk to each other. It's the word of mouth that I'm, I'm 
very interested in as well. Right. I love word of mouth too, but I use outbound to kind of start it because if you wait forever for word of mouth to happen, it, will, it won't really happen as exponentially than if you have control uh, on your systems. For example, have you thought of launching your own podcast to uh, gather more clients and share more insights? You know, podcasts uh, like this one, uh, these interviews and are, are things that we are participants in rather than initiators of. Uh, we're not in, in uh, the technology world that you're in and what you're doing is fantastic. But, you know, I think our focus is on what we do with our clients rather than trying to initiate something from nothing. I would rather partner with someone like yourself if there is a need for us to do podcasts. But I don't, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't when we are a bit more, more grown up, I would say. Right. What do you like doing in your pastime when you're not at work? I read here that you love fine wine. Well, of course. I mean, you know, the fine wine is a hobby. Uh, I uh, swim. I follow the stock market. And that's one of the, it, my hobbies is to find out how companies work, the inner workings of companies, how they position themselves, how, are, how are, is the stock their stock doing and what do you do to make sure that people are, you know, uh, interested in what you're doing, therefore your stock value goes up. So I'm, I'm interested in that. And that's also a, a hobby of mine. But like I said, you know, the wine thing is not that uh, a, a daily occurrence of a hobby. But when, when I go on, on my travels, I spend time uh, going to vineyards and I enjoy learning more about wine. Then you write uh, confident, talking with confident and opinionated uh, people. How do you make sure that a, well, first, how, how do you get to speak to that many opinionated people? Is, just, is it just like past colleagues or people that you met in your life and you constantly come back to them? Do you like talking to new folks? And how do you make sure that the conversation stays uh, informative and educational for both of you? You know, I'm an extrovert, which means I'm happy to reach out to another person to pick their brains on something, learn something new. I'm inquisitive as a person. Um, and of course, the conversation is led by two people, not just one. So if I don't like what I'm hearing on the other side, I'll you know kind of brush it off and move on to a topic that's relevant or appropriate for me and what I'm trying to communicate. But, you know, you have the right to start any conversation. Now it's up to me to react or to respond in a way that is suitable to me and my style and my values. Right. I think like a lot of people are, are too vanilla when they talk, you know, they don't challenge one another because they think it's kind of insulting. That's the level one. I think there's a way to do it and smart people do appreciate that. So it's pretty much a super skill to be able to, have opinions and debate people and open your mind at the same time because a lot of debaters they just close their mind completely and the goal for them is to win 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 while the goal of an argument is to gain insights you know like gain neurons um last question That's for exactly. you um, Absolutely. you're in Absolutely. dubai uh crypto we've seen in the us that it's not doing super well i do think uh coinbase is gonna win its fight against the SEC, but a lot of folks are looking at Dubai um, from a, a crypto level and are interested in registering their company there and operating from there. What has been your take uh, since you have your foot on the ground with crypto in Dubai? You know, I, I started uh, with a couple of folks here uh, in, in crypto mining. So I'm, I'm into mining myself because I didn't want to get involved into the volatility of that the crypto world that I've seen it. Um, I think the, the market here or the government and the, the ecosystem has been uh, established for people that come in and want to play that game or be involved in a very fairly volatile, questionable uh, um, currency that is actually growing in many ways. And the ecosystem here allows it and, and, and encourages it. It tests it. It's, there's a lot of embryonic incubators here that's happening. And I see them and I get involved in having conversations with people. But like I said, I, I took the safe side. I bought a couple of machines. 
with, with a couple of colleagues who are managing it. And that's my contribution to the crypto world, but I'm into the mining side of it. And yes, the conversation is very hot, not as hot as it was a couple of years back. Uh, and my gut is this currency is not going to go away. It's too big to fail, as they say. Uh, they will have to regulate it. And once it's regulated, I think even banks and credit card companies and governments and central banks will start picking and choosing who they want to be involved in, in working with to make sure that the crypto world survives and thrives and adds value to everyone. Love it, Khaled. Thank you so much for showing up today. Where can people find out more about you and Tough Love? Well, we have, of course, Tough Love uh, uh, Instagram on, on LinkedIn. Uh, we, we, are, we have a website called Tough, sorry, TLA, which is Tough Love Advisors, but we call it TLPartners.com. Uh, so TLAPartners.com is the uh, website. So yeah, happy to engage with anyone or answer any questions that they may have.